Aloha all. This is Samana with Unconventional Insights. I'm showing you another hat of mine. I've been an esthetician for over 30 years, so I know a lot about holistic body and skin, and this is for anybody, but this is also for my industry of estheticians out there. So I want to talk a little bit about holistic skin approach and my view of things. I had a school for over 20 years in Maui and people came from all over the world. I also had a massage school and a day spa. I've worked with clients a lot throughout my life. I continue to work with clients and expand my knowledge and of the internal body, mind, spirit, emotions. It got me into life coaching 25 years ago, which I'm getting strongly into that also. But I'm finding being in Austin, just the aestheticians I've come across, they're all very lovely, yet they're not taught so well. So I want to offer some free uh, education here. So the holistic skin approach, so this may be a little bit shocking. So there's a difference from like selling products. And again, for skincare lines, I recommend that you just look at different things that you like and experiment with it on yourself or have people with different skin types experiment with it and then take the plunge and do it. Uh, in the day, so I always had my students start the program saying they want something totally holistic, and I come from a holistic start, and I also know medical approach, but I would say to them, a client's not going to pay you to put honey and egg whites on their face. They could do that at home. And as good as it feels and as natural as it is, it's not going to change their skin type. So when someone really wants something to change, they're going to pay money for it. And unfortunately, there's a beautiful balance to find between, as I put it when you're reading the ingredients, things that God made and things that man made. So that's basically just looking to see, are there carcinogenics in it? If there are, like Dermalogica is not my favorite. I can't believe how many people use that, and there's many carcinogenics in it. So many people have reactions to it. So find something that's clean. I personally use Sanitas, which I love. My niece turned me on to it, and I also use Glymed Plus. Love that too, so that's more pharmaceutical. So the other thing is, is that I find it's great to use two different... Um, it, two different lines, one that's uh, for price point also. So one that could be a little more uh, organic, holistic, etc. And then a better price, like for instance, Sanitas has this wonderful Vita Rich Serum that I love. And it's thin weight, it's heaven, and it's only $58. That's an incredible retail price for a client to pay. And then Glymed Plus, my favorite serum, which they have many, but my favorite is the uh, Power Stem uh, power. Oh, why am I, why am I blanking on that? Anyways, I'll get that for you. Anyways, it's 127 retail <laughs> stem cell power serum. I knew I'd get it. Yes. Okay. Perfect. I don't edit my shows. So it just is as it is. Anyways. So that's two different types of clients that will enjoy those. Another thing I want to say is all clients, all skin types, all ages, you need to educate them on why they want a serum and why they want a moisturizer. Two different things. Serums, if made from a line that has integrity, will be a lighter weight. It actually penetrates the skin, and regardless of the ingredients inside, it is to repair whatever skin type you're selling it for. And a moisturizer is a sealant to put on top of the skin. So you would always put on clean skin your, mo your serum, and then you'd put your moisturizer over it. And it acts as a sealant, so it's a barrier against pollutants and, and the environment, and it also kind of keeps the moisture into the skin. So clients need both of those. And a lot of people don't know the difference. So for cleansing, now I personally started experimenting in my 30s with my skin and found that I don't like, well, I don't like using a lot of face makeup. I like to go pretty natural. 
I am a person that will always use some type of topical C in a serum or a moisturizer or both every single day because you have to, it's imperative that you have to have a vitamin C because that helps to rejuvenate and repair the skin at all times. All skin types, people with rosacea, it will help take the redness out and it actually rebuilds uh, the, the vessels of the capillaries so it will strengthen them and have less redness, less broken capillaries, and it actually starts to repair. The other thing about vitamin C is it will it actually repels radiation. They did studies with this in the 80s before vitamin C became very popular and they would do these studies in Australia where you're right at the equator and they found that they had various sunscreens they would use that were good for you know blocking the the different rays but what vitamin C does is it as it goes on the skin it acts as this like spinning sensation uh, dynamic that will repel radiation from entering the skin. Now it's the radiation that enters the skin that causes skin cancer. So vitamin C is repairing the skin, it's protecting the skin, it's rejuvenating the skin. You want everything about it. It is an antioxidant, just like we take vitamin C internally. We want it topically on our skin. So back to cleansing. I basically like a clean, warm washcloth in the morning to freshen my skin or to use a toner without an alcohol base in it, something clean. Again, Sanitas has a wonderful moisture mist that I love. And um, Or if you need to cleanse, if you're someone that has to do that, to use a, like a milk cleanser, something that's gentle. So all... Often your clients will come and they'll have a line that you have know nothing about or they got their stuff from HEB or over the counter or who knows what the cleanser's about. And if a cleanser is too stripping for the skin, it's going to dry the skin out and it's going to cause breakouts. So either dry the skin out with a mature skin or cause breakouts with an oily skin. So, so you want a cleanser. So I tell clients to cleanse your skin and when you're done rinsing it, if you stretch your face like you're opening your mouth wide and your skin feels tight, then the cleanser is too stripping for the skin. So you don't want that. Now all cleansers are alkaline. It has to be a, a in order to in order to remove the oil in the skin, for cleansers, for shampoos or face wash or body wash, they have to be an alkaline pH. But the difference is, is how alkaline is it? The more alkaline it is, for instance, my natural students who would be using Dr. Bronner's, never ever use Dr. Bronner's on your face or your body or your pets or any of that. It is like an eight, eight and a half, I believe, pH, and it is way too strong and it will strip the skin of all of its lipids, all of its natural oils, moisture, etc. Do not use that. You could use Dr. Bronner's for the furry parts of the body, or even if there isn't fur there, where there used to be, under the arms, the groin, etc. So you want a cleanser that when you're done cleansing and rinsing and you do that stretching um, motion, that the skin's not going to feel tight. And that's hard sometimes to get people used to that, because especially if they have oily skin or congested skin, they'll say that they don't feel that clean. And again, I'm giving you the holistic approach. You could take what I say or experiment with it, but you will find a balance in the skin fairly quickly within 10 days to a month. The skin will start to transform. So now if they want a deeper cleanser, they can also in the evening get a gel cleanser Again, it has to be non-soap. We don't want it stripping the skin when they do their little stretching test to make sure it's not tight. And usually after being outside, working out, uh, face makeup, the pollutants in the air, whatever's happening, the free radicals are going on the skin and some people want to use a gel cleanser at night. So you use the cleanser. I'm old school. I like toners. Again, toners without any alcohol in it something gentle, and after the cleanser, I use the toner, so that puts the pH back to the skin and removes any residue of the soap, that the cleanser that might be there. And then I would have them do a 
serum and then a moisturizer and that's it. So if that is their nighttime regime, in the daytime they could again do the cleansing or the washcloth, they could do the toner if they want, they could put their serum on with their topical C on there and then they could put their sunscreen on over that and their face makeup. So everything goes on over that. And that is what I would have a client do. And then for an exfoliant, depending on how quickly their cells rejuvenate, and I, when I do an exfoliation on them in the treatment room, regardless if it's just a gentle manual scrub or if it is a, 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 a gentle chemical peel, like a lactic or a glycolic, or is it like something more serious like dermaplaning or, or microdermabrasion or microneedling? We have so many choices of exfoliants. I'll ask the client how many days, so I get them in the habit of, of feeling the texture of the T-zone and to get back to me and tell me how many days it is before they feel texture again, because that actually shows me how quick their cell renewal is. And if they're not that conscious and you're seeing them once a week, then when they come in and you cleanse their skin, you're going to feel to see how much texture they have. And that will kind of determine what types of exfoliants you're going to do in the treatment room and also what exfoliant you want them to do at home and how often. Now, I don't want someone to over exfoliate because you want to keep the balance of the skin and you don't want to strip it of its lipids of the fats and the water. So I don't believe in overdoing it. I believe in kind of staying out of nature's way. But you do, this is the easiest way to sell professional exfoliating in your, in your treatment room services that you're going to provide or for them to do exfoliants at home and to tell them that skin cancer only attaches to dead, unhealthy skin. So if there's texture and they don't exfoliate, there's a higher chance of skin cancer. Now, I've had many male clients through the years, especially in Maui, because they windsurf, they surf, they're doing construction, everything is like outdoor and focus. It's that same way in Austin and Texas and wherever. So with the men, it's important to get them to exfoliate. And especially like if it's older men that are balding or thinner hair, you want to make certain when you're doing facials and different things on them that you're feeling for texture in there because you could be preventing them from getting skin cancer in their scalp and also the tops of the ears around the lips those are important areas to to note if there's texture and to get them on a regular some type of of scrub like I usually sell them a some type of manual scrub with some little abrasive in it that and I tell them to keep it in the shower this is for men or women you kind of want life to be easy for them and tell them to use it one to three times a week while they're in the shower and just do a gentle little movement over to get any texture off the skin and then to see you as the esthetician regularly is good also I want to be certain that they are doing these treatments, that they are doing their skincare at home. So as soon as a client comes in, I ask them, what is your home routine? So I don't shame them. I just want to know what they're doing. And it's important that they have some form of routine. I don't care if they use the same line, but it's often good to start them in the same line because manufacturers will produce things a certain way so that they work uh, better with each other. And then you kind of have a way of doing this and determining like what needs to be tweaked slightly. If you're using two different lines and eventually get them to do a little bit of both, then you kind of know what's already happening and how they interact with each other. If you have a client that comes in and they already are set on their skincare line and they don't want you hustling them and they're defensive and all this happens immediately. There's this defense as soon as you start talking to them about something. I've learned to just say, if you're, if you're happy with your skin, that's great. If you ever have questions about wanting to improve it, let me know. And as soon as I say that, either clients will know right then their ego will shift and they'll say, okay, well, what do I do about this? Or I can't stand these wrinkles or the spots or who knows? Or they'll next time come in and say, okay, I'm open to what you're saying. And then I sell them one or two things. Now, for masks, for gel masks, I'm not a fan of 
oil, uh, excuse me, of clay-based masks for oily skin because it draws the moisture out, and I don't want that. I'd rather have a semi-drying clay-based mask if they have oily skin or acneic skin, or if it's already clay-based, then add a little aloe to it so it won't set totally. And again, for the mask, I tell the client if they want to do that once a week at home, something to treat their skin and just feel like they're giving themselves a little extra love or they want to feel better or know that they're doing something for themselves, then that's a great thing with the mask. But if they're not going to use it, I won't sell a mask at home to them because I don't want to. What I found in Beverly Hills, they, of course, most of these places you have a a minimum of what you're supposed to sell. So it was very easy to sell three, four hundred dollars to a client because of the price of the tickets, and you'd sell a whole line. And I found early on that I'd rather build trust with a client that's going to come to me and continue coming back to me and know that I'm not hustling them and I'll be honest with them. So I actually say, Are you someone that will use an eye cream or a lip cream? Or a neck cream? Like those are like extras. Are you someone that will um that likes to do a mask. Now exfoliating, I think that's kind of mandatory and it's just, I want them to do those sorts of things because as we said, we don't want skin cancer and it's very common out there. So learn to listen to your clients and if you're out there listening and you're just someone wanting to know about skin, then listen to all these things and go find an esthetician you love because they know what they're doing. Hopefully they know what they're doing. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about oily skin and talking about the acid mantle. So the acid mantle, if you were in school and learned about this, that's basically when you wake up in the morning and your skin has that little oily sheath on it, that's your acid mantle. Once you've been sleeping and resting and your body's in a, in a relaxed state, it will create this little kind of oily surface to it. So usually we wake up and we want to wash that off. Yet, that was designed for three reasons. So that happens naturally in the body, in a resting state. So the acid mantle is, like I said, it's the little oily coating on the skin, and it helps for germ penetration to prevent that from happening, so less breakouts. It helps for uh, preventing radiation and and uh, UV rays into the skin, and it's a natural moisturizer. So here's God designed this perfect body. Here's these three reasons why we need this acid mantle. Yet, you get someone with acne or oily skin, which I had acne as a, a growing up in high school, and so I was constantly using alcohol on my skin to clean it, which was burning it. And what it would do is it would strip all the oil from the skin. It would physically burn, but I couldn't stand how oily my skin would get. And what would happen is, is every time I washed my face or used Stridex pads or used alcohol or whatever, I would find that within an hour or so, my skin was oilier than ever. And why that is, is because you are kind of interfering with the natural balance of the skin. So the more you wash the skin or the, the harsher the cleanser, it takes anywhere from 20 minutes to three hours for that natural acid mantle to reform. So what happens is, is if I wash my face and I do that stretching of the mouth and I feel that it's really tight or it's squeaky clean or I just put a toner with a lot of alcohol in it and my skin feels totally clean, it's going to send messages to the brain to secrete oil because the brain wants that acid mantle balanced. So I find when clients come in, regardless if it's with acne skin and they're teenagers or if it's women in their 30s and early 40s and they're saying, why do I still have oily skin? I often look to see what they're cleansing with and how often they cleanse. And I believe that what they're doing is if they're cleansing too often or with too strong of a, of a product, it's going to make their skin oilier. Also, face powder will create that dry sensation and tell the brain to secrete more oil. So I'm not a fan of that. Like for, for foundations and things, I really like... Um, I like just like a little light tinted moisturizer if you need to do that when it's the winter time and you're looking a little 
sickly. <laughs> I'm a sun lover, I'm sorry. So that is probably the most I would recommend for that. So I believe that's about it for products. Now treatments, my whole career, I would get clients to come in weekly. So a lot of times people will come in once a month for a facial, but I have never sold a facial once a month to a client. What I say to them is depending on your time and your income, I'd like to see you once a week or every other week, ideally. And I always would offer a series for a facial price. So I want to get a client to come into me for facials mostly. And then from that point, I sell a series of microdermabrasions, microneedling, chemical peels, uh, oxygen facials, um, dermaplaning. Like that, at, from that point, I'll add all the other treatments and services that we do, lash extensions, face waxing, body waxing, whatever else, your body wraps, body scrubs, uh, reflexology, lymphatic drainage, it goes on and on what, we, what we're able to do. I do teach a lot of continuing ed workshops uh, in-house in South Austin. I also do um, booking.com rooms that I have guests. So oftentimes if my students come from somewhere else and want to take a particular workshop, I give them a deal on a room so you could contact me personally if that's something you want to do. And I do a lot of Zoom online if it's just theory. Like for instance, I'm doing an aromatherapy on August 12th and that's uh, two and a half to three hours and I'm going to talk about how to make your own products through essential oils for all the skin types, how to balance all the skin types and also for emotional things for anxiety and depression and hormonal imbalance and PMS and all of that stuff and that's only $75 and I am also teaching a lash extension class in August and that I have microneedling this uh, Monday the 22nd, this isn't going to air by then, but I will teach that again with microneedling and nanoneedling. I teach a microdermabrasion workshop with oxygen facial, and I teach dermaplaning. I teach eastern skin analysis, regular skin analysis. I'm teaching in September a full four-week thing on doing a 30-day cleanse. We'll all do a 30-day cleanse together in a detox, and you will, your skin will look better, you'll, your weight will balance, you'll be inspired, you'll be happier than ever. I guarantee it will change your life. That's my specialty. Is anything about making the body happier, more vital, more juicy, and make that skin beautiful. So the more you learn and do yourself, the more you could share with family and friends and clients and change the world. And you'll see that diet does have a big factor in this. So I do want to talk about supplements. So I am big on supplements. I've always sold supplements. I actually sell pure encapsulation. And you can get that through me on my website, which is S-P-A-L-U-N-A dot com. And you'll see my updated workshops and everything that I do and my life coaching and etc. And any questions that you ever have or podcasts that you'd like to me to possibly do topics on or interviews on, or if you have certain questions, you could always email me at samana, S-A-M-A-N-A, at S-P-A-L-U-N-A dot com. Samana at spaluna dot com. Okay, back to this. So supplements. Every client, every age... Let's say every age. From the time, if it's female, from the time they start into their hormones and their adolescent phase, same with men, males, I'd like everybody on some form of omega-3. So omega-3s can actually just say omega-3s or it could say various different things. There's different forms of it. They have barrage oil. They have hemp oil. They have actual what they call fish oil. They have krill oil black currant oil, evening prim primrose oil. There's so many different types. It will say oodles oil. If you go into health food stores, you could look in the refrigerated area and you'll see all of these different omegas. So omega-3 is the most important because it's actually an anti-inflammatory and it will help to coat the nervous system 
So we are born with this little oily sheath over our nervous system and through stress, meaning actual stress of life through the environment, through doing too much, through not eating right, through not eating healthy fats, etc., we diminish that oily sheath. So by taking healthy fats internally and eating them, but now we're talking about regular omega-3s, it will actually retain and rebuild that oily sheath. So when you're feeling snappy or you're very sensitive to bright light or loud noises or you're jumpy when a book drops or something happens, some loud noise, that's usually a uh, indication that you are deficient of fats in your body, healthy fats, not greasy french fry fat, fats. So I recommend an average of 12 to 1500 milligrams of omega-3s. And also people that have physical pain in their body, I work out six days a week. There are times that I'm in so much pain because of the lactic acid buildup that I'll use the omega-3s and that helps with inflammation. Also enzymes internally are very good for physical pain in the body that it acts as a natural anti-inflammatory. So if you get enzymes and they're high quality enzymes, again from a health food store or HEB, different places will have it. Costco has them also. So if you take enzymes for body pain, you will take them in between meals, not with food, because if you take enzymes with food, like for instance, if you're into starchy, carby, fatty foods, greasy french fries and hamburgers, pastas, cheese, all of that stuff, and we're trying to keep your skin clean and your body clean, I would have the client take an enzyme with that because it will help to break it down. But if you're you or a client or someone you know has physical pain where it's sharp pain, it's heat in the body, it's inflammation, I'd have them get enzymes in addition to the omega-3s and take those in between meals because if it doesn't have food to break down and you take it in between a meal, it will start to eat up the lactic acid like little Pac-Man. So it's very cool. Yes. So now people with PMS issues, women, that are going through their boobs hurt or they're puffy or all of that's happening. I would recommend evening primrose is a really good one if they don't want to do fish oils or just a specific omega-3. Barrage oil is a very good one also. I found that men that tend to have a lot of heat in the palms of their hands and feet in Chinese medicine, that's called kidney kidney or liver yin deficiency. So it means that they're like lacking fluids and they're a little hotter by nature and impatient. They do very well with omega-3s and they do very well with black currant oil is another um, nice supplement for men. I will get into more detail if you do the September cleanse and I do have a special for all four weeks. I'd highly recommend it because I get into physical detox and cleanse, and then I get into mental and emotional detox and guaranteed to change your life, as I said. But other supplements for skin, for the body, for regular balance are all the antioxidants, which are vitamin A, C, and E. Now, remembering that A and E are oil soluble, which means you can actually take too much of it and it could have a toxicity in the body. It doesn't have a way of like eliminating so you can take too much. So kind of work on that and test that or ask the people at the health food store how, how many you should take, what's the milligrams. And again, your age and lifestyle will determine. So the older you are and the more stressed you are, you're going to need more of these things. Where the younger, you don't need it as much. But vitamin A, like we do our retinols and different things for the skin, it's, very, it's one of the most significant vitamins for the skin and for repair. So people with acne, people with damaged skin, old skin, mature skin, sun damage, you need vitamin A. And vitamin E also, it's a, a deep repair for the skin. Now vitamin C, you can't overdo that. That's water soluble. That's important to take every day, anywhere from 250 to 1000 milligrams of that. And the thing with vitamin C is if you take too much, you'll just have a blowout. You'll just have the runs and that's when you know it's too much. So just take it until that level and you'll know how much you need a vitamin C and that helps you with things. 
Another thing that I recommend specifically for skin and body balance, just overall to everyone without seeing specific conditions or disorders they have, are probiotics. And again, from Pure Encapsulation, I love their probiotics. They deliver them to you in dry ice because they need to be cold and refrigerated because they have live cultures to them. And I wake up every morning on an empty stomach and I'll take my probiotic. And basically, with all the studies they've done, people that have a lot of colds and flus and various things, they find that the immune system is, a third of the immune system has is in the gut. So if the gut is, if you're literally filled with shit because you're eating bad things and your diet's bad with fast foods and starches and carbs and dairy and sugars and all that stuff, things in a box, then you're definitely going to need probiotics. So if you're feeling that you're weak and you tend to get sick a lot, go for probiotics. If you're seeing that your skin is highly congested, acneic, broken out, deficient looking, dull looking, you need probiotics. So probiotics will help keep the body strong. I love that. Okay, what else do I want to tell you? I do want to say that diet matters a lot in reference. You are what you eat. I have always believed in that. In my cleanse, I'm going to get into it in such detail that you will be, well, what do I eat then? And then I will tell you. Overall, I explain to clients, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. And my view of God is not a guy with a beard. It's the center of everything that connects us all. But I will say, overall, to eat what God makes, meaning if it comes off the tree, if it's goat milk, if it's something, like I do not like non-fat, low-fat, 2%, 2%, any of that. If you're gonna, if you have to eat dairy or cheese, do not do it non-fat, low fat. Eat the whole thing. Because think of the arrogance that man thinks if it can let's take the fat out of it so that we'll make it better. It's not how it was designed. Our body needs fat. Our brain is comprised mostly of fat. So if we want to keep our mind sharp and thinking and on, we want to have enough sufficient fat. So diet-wise, you want to eat enough lean protein. So that's like not pork. I'm not a fan of pork, and I'm going to one of these podcasts do Eating Right for Your Blood Type because as much as there's controversy, I love it, and I've used that for 25 years. I've helped many people with diabetes, high blood pressure, anxieties, depression, weight issues, autoimmune disorders, it goes on and on. What I've helped them with stomach pains because they're not eating right. But generally, lean protein, so that's beef, chicken, fish, uh, seafood, shellfish, all of that stuff. So lean, and ideally if you could do um, hormone-free and antibiotic-free, that would be great. Lots of vegetables, as many vegetables as you can Eat is wonderful. Deep green, blue green is excellent. Fruits, but watch fruits because bananas are good in potassium. They're excellent for old blood types, but they are high in sugar, so you have to watch that. Berries, you can't go wrong with them, but try to make them organic or hope they're organic because they won't screw with your blood sugar and they're excellent for the body. And If you're, depending on your blood type, whole grains are good. Only whole grains, not like half the stuff out there. Again, I'll get into GMOs and corn and wheat and all that stuff. And so many people have gluten intolerance and what a disaster that is. But overall, also healthy fats as we were talking about. So that's avocados, certain fish like salmon, but only wild salmon, not farmed. We'll talk about that another time. And seeds and nuts and coconut oil, olive oil, nice, great things like that on a regular basis. There was, a, I believe in the 80s, there was a book called The Zone. And this was by Barry Sears. Sears, sorry. And... Um, That was an excellent book because he had a, he said the zone. So for instance, any of you into sports, 
and say you're playing tennis or you're golfing or you're 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 running a mile and you're just they call it the sweet spot where it's just heaven everything is working everything is flowing it's just grand that's called the zone being in the zone well this Barry Sears came up with this a long time ago that if you eat four he would say the proportions of each meal would be 40 30 30 so 40 would be carbohydrates and carbohydrates at that point is looking at vegetables grains fruits all of that combined 30 percent is fats and 30 percent is protein and he basically would say that you're one meal away from being in the zone. So if you wake up and you just carved out and ate all this sugary cereal or or overdid it with queso and chips or pizza from the night before and you just feel like garbage, then your next meal, if you had it proportioned in that 40 carbs, 30 fats, 30 protein, that you could put yourself in balance immediately and feeling good again. But what you'll find is, so any of you interested in my Eastern skin analysis, that one is a fun class because for people not even in this industry, because it will show you wherever there are imbalances in the face. Like I got into life coaching because I started to see that I could look at someone's face and body and tell everything that's going on emotionally, internally with them. And, um, And so you could see where there's congestion or breakouts or where the damage, the areas of their face that this is, what is happening internally, emotionally, what organs are affected, but also the diet. Like I could tell right away when someone's eating dairy or what is happening or when they're not digesting properly. So I will give them recommendations for that and you will learn those tricks also. In my, I'm going to do two more series on this, and my podcast will always come out Thursday at 8 a.m. Central Time. And my next one is going to be on, so for the skin series part two, this one is going to talk about the five elements and about emotions in the skin and how that affects us and the different organs and correlation and anger, rage, sadness, how all of that affects us. And that will be enlightening for anyone out there wanting to learn more about themselves and the body. And then my third part and last part of this skin series will be the mental spiritual balancing of the skin and body. And we'll kind of prep and get a little into the cleanses and inspiration and diets and different exercises and why things matter and meditations and journaling and all those fun things. Now, all of this is just little sample things in my podcasts. And again, I am available for life coaching. I do most of my things online, uh, either through FaceTime or Messenger or Skype, or we could just do phone conversations. I have clients of mine that just want to stick to the phone and that's fine too. Or if you're in South Austin, you're welcome to come here and have a one-on-one in person and I find that we get really um, a lot done and I'm going to have some interviews with people that have questions and you'll kind of see how I work with them and guide them with my insight, my profound insight to change lives and I love what I do. I'm glad I'm doing these podcasts. Please be patient with me. I don't edit. I'm just a one-shot girl And uh, contact me if you have any questions. And please subscribe to the channels. Follow me. I'm on Facebook, Samana Benedetti. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on groups on Facebook. I'm all over. I'm working on my book, which is about finished. And hopefully I'll get an agent and that will be published soon too. So it's a lot of this. My topics will be vast. Soul to skin is why that's my tagline because we get into sexuality and tantra and relationships which is big and I will be doing a workshop with a uh, co-friend of mine David in November and this is going to be for singles or couple couples and new relationships long-term relationships and we're going to do I'm not certain if we're going to do three or four weeks yet but it's going to be transformative and fun and playful and insightful and you'll reach your edge and you're going to love it. Okay, I've enjoyed this little session with you. I look forward to our next podcast and have a lovely day.